everybody, it's Rhiannon here at Mouth Mystic Church. This video is very special. I have decided to do a 30 day challenge. I did one on all dresses and this one is living as a traditional Catholic woman for 30 days. Now I will say I'm pretty much a traditional Catholic woman, but I wanted to bring in some specific elements into this process that was very particular to being more of a traditional Catholic woman. Now, one thing I will say is we still attend a Novus Ordo Mass. Um, I'm hoping that we can attend a traditional Latin Mass. At one point, we do have one in our diocese, not very far. Um, and we once attended one when we were in Ohio like, as well. But it's more about living it in my everyday life. I will show you a list that I put together of things that I plan on doing during this 30-day challenge and then adding more as they come and just um, really pouring myself into this. I think it's very special and I feel the Holy Spirit is really gonna move during this process. So let me go ahead and show you that list here. Okay, so this is my list for just daily prayers and things to keep up with for my health and such. So in the morning, I listen to the Angelus Prayer Song and Mother Angelica and the St. Michael Chaplet. I do my stretches. I listen to morning prayers from For Mary and then I have my morning smoothie. Around noon, I listen to the Angelus Prayer Song again. Um, I try to do a workout. If not, I do that later. I have my second smoothie and I listen to the Litany of Loretto and pray it. At 3 p.m., I try to always do the Divine Mercy Chaplet or I do it later if I forget. I have fruit in the afternoons and then, <clears throat> excuse me, I do the Litany of the Saints. Around 6 p.m. or during the evening hours, I listen to the Angelus Prayer Song again. I do our daily rosary, whether I'm listening to it while I'm doing the dishes and such. I stretch, I try to have a healthy dinner, and then I try to focus on reading for one hour a day. Here's another list that I put together, and it just has some different things I'm going to be focusing on during these 30 days. The first one is to give away all Protestant books and do not buy any more. And the books that I'm talking about are ones that are confusing or kind of anti-Catholic. I'm sorry, my kids are so loud. It's just how it is around here. Um, number two is give away in modest clothing. Do not buy any more. I struggle with this sometimes when it comes to jeans. Uh, personal preference, I just, I want to let go of all the jeans. Number three is wear veil and mask um, and reverence the Eucharist. I actually stopped doing this. I did this for years. I wore the veil for years. Um, and then I stopped recently, so I wanna go back to doing it. Four, continue my prayers, morning, noon, and evening, what I showed you before. Five, temperance with meals and adding in fasting. Number six, do not use television and gaming as a babysitter for the kids. <laughs> Number seven, come under my husband's headship, which honestly, it's already there, but I just added it anyway. Be a charitable but firm mother. I'm working on being more firm, and sometimes certain kids' temperaments need a little bit more firmness. You know, just making sure that they're listening and, and making sure to, you know, get down to eye level and talk with them. Um, number nine, raise my standards for children's chores. Ten, take no part in cultural mindset or paying practices during this time. Eleven, uh, read an hour a day in Catholic books. Twelve, develop skills around the home. Be deliberate about this. Thirteen, pray continuously. Fourteen, trust God completely. And fifteen, pray to St. Rita and St. Monica each day. Okay, so you've seen the list. I'm sorry about the horrible lighting and the introduction of this video, but I'm gonna show you clips of the 30 days, um, things I wore, things I did, things I thought, processing all of that and going from there. So again, I'm in my closet doing this, this intro at night when I'm able to, but I hope you enjoy this video. It is very special to me and I'm really excited to be doing it on this channel. Okay, so it's day two and I really realized today how much time I spend on thinking about if I'm doing things right and comparing my experience with others who have very loud voices or very strong opinions. Having come from my history, very feminist, you know, um, new age, just the very worldly culture. I've realized that those voices, I just don't need to listen to them, like at all. And the reason I listen to them is because I always feel like there should be a place for everyone's voice. And I wanna be, I always wanna be open to hearing, you know, people's perspectives and heart. But what I have realized through this even this is very short little part of my walk so far in this process is that it's a beautiful thing to want to be ready to hear someone's heart 
but it's an entirely other thing to go listening to it and just letting all of those voices and pictures and things in your head for the sake of wanting to be like kind to the other when that person's not even sitting in front of you. I hope this makes sense. Um, and so I, I realized today that it is okay to completely focus on Christ and his church and my vocation right in front of me. It's like I've always done that in action with my family, but I've always had these like constant like voices or thoughts in my head from things that I've seen or something I've read or something I saw and having to constantly have this thought of like, okay, well, how can I be kind and, and loving to this perspective? And how can I, instead of realizing that that person is not sitting in front of me right now, that person is not needing my love and empathy right now. This is just a, a short on YouTube or this is something I read in a paragraph. So I'm choosing to save that kindness and that patience and that empathy for real life situations with people that might be coming from you know the past that I came from and no longer spending my time letting that stuff in via you know TV books and things like that. So just wanted to share that on day two of like that really hit home with me today and how much noise and like stress and like overwhelming trying to take consideration things that I don't need to do on a daily basis in order to love God, um, live out my faith, love my family and my vocation, and even love people in the world and all that's going on. I can pray and without opening myself up to all of that via social media. So anyway. So it's day three and today is going to be a good day. Um, I realized today that I do a ton of things and I was like researching traditional Catholic womanhood, like very basic, like external things. Like I make all the meals. I do pretty much all the domestic work in the house. Um, I, it's like really normal already for me. So that's kind of normal. And then, um, Today, I want to really focus and research the heart of traditional Catholic womanhood. I also found this when I'm going through all this stuff because we moved recently, Pray For Us. Um, and I'm watching the movie St. Rita Unformed. I've seen it before, but I wanted to watch it again because she is an amazing example at it. So on day three, I am like in an unafraid way, walking into just learning more from a Catholic perspective it's and eight. loving it. It's eight. Okay, so... I just tidied up the kitchen. It was messy from last night and getting everything ready this morning. So I actually found some things. I'm so excited. In our shed, there was like, I found like a bug in it. So I'm like, I freak out about bugs. So I was just trying to like <laughs> tidy up my rosaries, but I have my, one of my snacker, my rosaries, something for a board I have, my old My Way of Life by St. Thomas. I actually thought this was my, my imitation of Christ for a moment, but I found that and then I also found my grandmother's cookbook from Bell City and my mother gave it to me and I keep it in here to keep it safe. I want to get it touched up one day if possible. And one of my favorite cookbooks, which I don't think they ha they sell it anymore, but I love it. It's the best. And my sister got me this little um, cookbook holder. I love it. So I found all these things. But anyway, I just kind of tidied stuff up and I love these. If you don't ever, I need to wash this one. If you don't have one they're the best half crocheted oh you see my slippers and hand towels i need to wash this one but anyway so i cleaned up i need to scrub that down we have a little area we haven't put up our holy water thing in our new house yet so we have these waiting but anyway and then our fruit counter but i did all the dishes and just was spraying down this was actually my grandmother's uh, she was a wonderful homemaker and my mother had it and gave it to me it was, she was my father's mother and then we have our little housewarming gift for the kids. I'm gonna put some candies in here. My husband got this for me for, I think it was my birthday, I can't remember. And then this, I have chalk for a chalkboard and I painted it, it's just like a little jar. I love these. Um, I'll be definitely painting more things, like I have this one. I love painting these and adding little pretty things to the house, but anyway. So yeah, and then this area kind of need to like tidy up. And then this is for our holy water. My husband's going to put it up. He's so good at putting them up, like making sure they're in the right place so they don't fall. So he'll be putting that soon. We have a place for mail. And then I really encourage you to have a place, if you don't already, for your husband's keys and wallet 
and your own so he never is like where are my items you know he has a place to put them and he can always find them easily and then because we're in florida i have a little area for sunscreen but anyway so yeah and if you do want a tip for you know, staying healthy. And if you're interested in having more of a trim figure, <laughs> which I know some women are, like I wanted to be healthy and feel a little bit more trim. I've lost 80 plus pounds, but anyway, I do suggest having fruit <laughs> for snacks. So I woke up this morning and I had my smoothie in the morning and then um, I try to have fruit for snack throughout fruit for snacks throughout the day. And it's very good for staying healthy, um, depending on obviously, if you can have fruit throughout the day, if for some reason you have a health issue that you can't, I understand, but if you can, it's just great. It's just filled with deliciousness. Watermelon is so filling and you can have a ton of it if you're like a volume eater. Oh, and I have Plantable Kiki's new book, which I don't know if you know about her, but she's on um, Instagram and she has lots of content for plant-based eating, which I am predominantly plant-based, but every now and then, I will have a steak. My husband makes delicious steak and he loves to share the things that he makes sometimes. So I love having the steak and it's good to get all those, the things that you need. And, um, and then sometimes when I'm just in the mood for chicken, I have grilled chicken, but anyway, so I just wanted to share that. We're getting ready to go to the park. This fun flowy skirt with some shorts under it. A little t-shirt, my hair up in clip, glasses. Hey everybody, it's day four. So I'm actually I'm getting some stuff done. It's about 11 o'clock, I think. I am working on a baby blanket for a friend of mine. I got a whole bunch of yarn yesterday. So I came in here this morning to work on our closet because it had become just a mess since we've moved in. I still need to go through stuff. This was my grandmother's blanket she made me when I was a kid. We still have it. I just have some things in here that we were able to keep. We had to give away tons of stuff on our move because, because of a lot of different things. Um, the uh, moving truck was not honest with us, the company. And so on the day of the move, I had to give away like over 40 big bins of stuff quickly. It was very hard. But one of the things I did this morning when I cleaned the closet was organize my husband's shirts um, by color and, um, you know, like long sleeve, short sleeve collar. Went ahead and did my color coordination. I actually was going to give some dresses away because they're too big. And then I realized, what if I got pregnant again? It would be nice to have dresses that were bigger. So I went in and put them actually back in and closed up that thing. And then I organized over here. This is my big sun hat for when I go outside. I love it. <laughs> I got some aprons for my younger three. I have two boys and a girl and we went on Amazon and they picked out their own prints. So we got like a construction vehicle one for one boy. And then I think the other one chose um astronauts and then my daughter shows a little unicorn one so they're really cute they'll be coming over in a couple of days and then we're gonna hang them in the hall closet with little hangers so that was fun but anyway so I got this area pretty much done it's something I have to kind of do like quite a lot <laughs> to make sure it's done my sewing machine here eventually my husband is looking for an L-shaped desk to heal here for my sewing and my homeschool planning I have a couple of items I want to sell and I put them there and then I have some stuff I just folded that I've already toppled over, but that's okay. So just wanted to kind of share with you some of the things I'm doing in the morning as a traditional Catholic wife and mother. <laughs> Honestly, this is like the easiest challenge I've ever done because this is kind of like what I do, but I am being more intentional about what I listen to and what I take in and um, being more intentional about getting things done rather than like, cause I've suffered with bad back spasms over the last year. And so I have to ice my back every morning, but it's getting better and better. So I'm finding that the, that kind of became something that took a lot of time to sit down doing. And so now I'm working on making sure, making sure that I make sure to do like 15 minutes and get up and do work and not just linger when I don't need to anymore because my back's getting better. Praise Jesus. So anyway, okay, I'm gonna go show you the kitchen real quick. Okay, so I'm having my morning smoothie. This is actually my second one. I have midday, so it's actually my midday smoothie. Finished all the dishes from last night. We had a blackout last night, and so <laughs> I couldn't do like any dishes last night. And I'm making some lunch now. Hello. So I don't like to do ramen noodles a lot, but the kids really want them this week. So we're making chicken ramen noodles and it's really a fun thing to do with the kids, like because they can put the little packets in and stir it up. I was raised like super like healthy, like never had ramen noodles. The first time I ever saw them, I was like, what is that? Uh, so I don't like to do it too much, but the kids really, really like. It. So yeah, the kids really wanted it. And now what are we gonna do? We're gonna put it in pretty bowls. It's another way to make ramen noodles special. One. 
Four bowls, pretty bowls. Now it's time for laundry. So years ago, I remember being really overwhelmed with laundry and really frustrated that I had to do it and all these things. But I recognized over time that it wasn't actually how I felt. When I was a kid, I loved doing laundry. Folding laundry was my favorite thing. My sister and I did it together and I loved it. And when we were first married, I loved it. But over the years, so many people would be like, why are you having to do all that laundry? Other people should be doing that laundry. And I just believed all of that. Now I do think it's important for kids to learn how to do laundry, but I personally feel it is my responsibility to do my husband's laundry. I like doing my husband's laundry. I have failed at it many times. I've been late. I've been put things off. And, but for me personally, I feel like it's a part of my walk towards heaven and I love it. And I just wanted to say that. So over the years, I've had to work really hard at not letting other people's ideas of homemaking come into my heart and I don't know if I told you but my son made this for me today so when my kids make things for me or give me things I wear them <laughs> like all day sometimes I forget and we go out and I have like stickers all over the place but it's their artwork so um anyway but um I try really hard not to let other people's ideas of things come into my heart and wreck my homemaking um or just give me worry and concern that I'm not doing something right um, I just try to remind myself that the Lord has given me these beautiful tasks for this beautiful family and I just keep trying my best. Like chicken on the skillet, I am not good at cooking chicken on the skillet. And so many people are like, well, I'm just not good at things. And I'm like, I am going to learn how to do this. So I keep trying. Last night's chicken was not the worst. Every couple of days throughout the week, I make chicken. But one day I will, be, I will get skillet chicken down. If you guys have tips, leave them in the description box below. Um, and it's going to be lovely and so good for the family. <laughs> So it's the end of the day and I've had so many realizations today. It's been amazing. Just the peace that I've had, um, just focusing on not focusing <laughs> on stuff that doesn't pertain to my vocation. Also just really stepping into enjoying every bit of what I'm doing here at home and allowing myself to love it, which I actually do. But for so many years, there's always been this nagging like, I shouldn't like it. Or like, I should be miserable or I should be upset. And I just don't feel that way. I mean, there has been so many years of work to get to the point that I don't feel that way. At the beginning, I had so many hangups. I thought that how I felt was actually how I felt, but it wasn't. It was just the world screaming in my ears and my heart. <laughs> Good morning, it's day five. I've, some, I've noticed some positive things around the house that have already been happening that weren't even what I was expecting, things with my children and my husband, and it's been really beautiful. <laughs> I don't want to go into specifics for privacy for the family, but it's been really, really nice. So yeah, so I'm realizing a couple of things. One, in the past, I've always wanted to be very home-centered. I remember having one of the last jobs I had, and I had a business manager in the office that was over me, like I was, you know, under her directive. And I remember thinking, how stressful it was because she would put her two cents about everything. I was a newly married woman and she would like tell me all the things she had been recently divorced and had remarried and no offense to anyone who's been divorced, but she would just like put her two cents about everything. Like when my husband would come in and like what I would share because I didn't know better yet to not share with certain people. And I remember distinctly having this feeling. I was becoming Catholic at the time and I remember thinking, I want to only have God and my husband over me and an authority of me. I do not want to have a boss. And I remember having that distinct thought and being kind of like, whoa, that's new. <laughs> and like what I had experienced my whole life. But it was the beginning of, of this work in my life, this learning like beautiful traditional roles in marriage. In some ways I had never looked back. I did have a couple of things that like other jobs and things that happened, but that seed had been planted, the Lord had put in my heart, and it just began to develop. The last place we lived, I did feel a lot, and I felt I felt like it wasn't, like people didn't think it was good for me to be in the home. Like, like I remember when I would go out and do things and be part of like stuff, people were like, oh, I'm so happy that to see you out. I'm so happy, oh, you get to do all these things. Like, And I remember realizing like, I think people think that I'm like, 
like I can't ever go out or something, but I never felt that way. I loved being home centered and being completely available to my husband and my children. And we would go out as a family. Um, but I just, I don't know. It was like kind of an odd thing. I do like to go to things at the church. Like I have gone to see Imm Immaculate Illibar Giza, um, speak for one of my birthdays. My husband, um, got the thing for it and watch the kids and I went or like, um, I love doing that. And sometimes it's nice to go out, but I, I love to go sit before the Eucharist and adoration. Um, those are the things that I want to do. Like a friend of mine and I, our husbands watched the kids and we went and sat and had an hour, an hour of adoration together. And we went to a local coffee shop and she gave me some beautiful things from be at, be at heart, um, be a heart. I can't remember what it's called. I'll link in the description box below. Um, we had a beautiful fellowship as Catholic women and, um, and so anyways, so I'm reading this and I'm rem rem realizing and reminding myself of all those times where like I have felt by, you know, outside, mostly women, but outside sources, almost like bad that I wanted to be home and, and love my husband and honor him. And it's just all like coming together now. I can see it as I'm, as I'm spending this time in lots of prayer with the Lord, really focusing on my role as a wife and mother. And, and yeah, so I just wanted to share that as a reflection this morning on day five. I think this is going to be a long video, but I would imagine if someone's interested in this topic, they would probably prefer it to be a long video. This is what I have so far for a crocheted blanket for my friend. Um, it has a little design here and then it's all just double crochet and then I'll have this same design on the other side and then we'll have a, my bandaid, and it'll have a shell stitch all around in yellow. So, so, um, today was a challenging day, had some definite lows today, um, and had to really focus in and remind myself of why I'm doing what I'm doing and trust in the Lord in my vocation. And I wanted to make sure to add this little bit in because it can be really hard um, as a wife and a mother sometimes. And yes, I can. What would you like? Remembering that what we're doing is not instant. It's not even sometimes in our lifetime. But always trying to remember that in the end, our work that we're given by the Lord the people that we are, like the husbands that we have and the husband that we have, you know, the husband I have, the children that I have, um, and my vocation with my husband and, you know, for God, for our children, however you want to say it, is, um, is his good work that he's given me. And I don't know if I'm making any sense, but just trying to remind myself that I can't go off of, um, different moods people might have or challenging situations or seeing things in a different way than what you would see things like it's really not about that oh i was listening to this talk about the spiritual life i'll link in the description box below and he talked about feelings and it was really good like feelings and a spouse and feelings and god and more like just like relationships you might have with people so i'm gonna link in the description box below because it was so good anyway so yeah Good morning, it's day nine of the challenge. Last couple of days were just lovely family days. I made a big gumbo yesterday and my daughter and I made homemade apple pies together. It was lovely. I feel super sick today though because I don't normally eat that heavy. So I thought I would include in kind of like keeping with being healthy and personally, I want to um, honor the fact that I've lost like, you know, 80 plus pounds and keep it that way so on days after days where I have like really heavy food but like super enjoy it with my family I just wanted to show you what I do so um, I'll show you some of the drinks I have in the morning so I made some juice watermelon and pineapple that's all that's in here and then the smoothie has frozen bananas cherries I have perium greens and then also regular like fresh greens and sun warrior protein powder so that's basically what I have in the morning and I'll probably have another smoothie for lunch just to keep everything really light and aid in digestion and then um, we'll see what happens for dinner because we have a lot of leftover gumbo and also made a really big delicious bean soup and it is such an easy recipe and it is so delicious so if I remember I will include it in the description box below if you like 16 bean soup also and it's vegetarian and I love it <laughs> so anyway so today's gonna be a good day um, I've really been you know keeping up with keeping everything tidy and clean 
And one thing that's been really nice is that I've been keeping all secular stuff pretty much out of my mind and heart. I don't watch anything. I spend a lot of time every day on my prayers and I've been putting my AirPod in while I'm cleaning and stuff. I just keep one in because I want to be able to hear everybody else. But I've been listening to lots of talks. Maybe I will link some in the description box below that I've really been enjoying. I started li listening to The Mystical City of God. Very powerful stuff. If you've never read the book to your kids, The Lady in the Blue Cloak, it's a great book and it's about Venerable Mary Agriva, I think that's how you say her name. And it's a really great one to do too if you're learning about early American history and like the natives and stuff. Um, it's a great book. But anyway, so that's what I've been doing and it's been going really well. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the day and I hope you ladies are all doing well. So every morning I try to make the bed. I have to get a new pillowcase for mine because this thing is ripped anyway. And then I've been trying to tidy up our dresser, but it always just kind of seems like this. So I do want to, like I t told you guys before, my husband said he would get me a L-shaped desk and I'll have a place for crocheting and sewing and everything. And we have these really beautiful windows so, and then I also have all these like things over here. This is my kids' things. My little boy made me this balloon. It says, pray, pray, pray. Isn't that cute with little, oh, can't see it. Anyway, I have a whole bunch of books here. A lot of them I'm selling. The most of them are Protestant books. And then I have some health books and some Catholic books and my little ladies. I love Miss Bunny, this little girl, and Miss Cow. I love them. Anyway, we have these big, beautiful windows. And this is where my son plays basketball. We set it up outside and our pool is over there. So every morning, either my husband or myself, we open these up and I try to make the bed and it's not perfect, but special because it's ours. I also got a package in for a few special items that are very feminine and casual. So I'll share it with you real quick. So when I first had my cart, it was so full of stuff because that's what I've always done in the past. I had a skirt I wanted to try and I had every single color. And I had all these shirts and all these dresses and I was like, I don't need all of this. So I've really been working hard at like paring down and controlling my like interests and passions so they don't go crazy. And I end up with like tons and tons of clothes, which has happened in the past. So I got some skirts. There's this beige one and they're very casual with pockets. This light blue one. I got a black shirt. I think this is a black shirt. And this, um, this rusty color one. So there were like literally seven different colors. I got three. <laughs> I have plenty of, I have two black skirts already, but I don't have any other color skirts that are casual. So I thought these would pair nicely with the different color shirts I already do have. And then got one just in case. I forgot that I got a green one. It's so pretty. I do suggest if you're trying to feminize your wardrobe to look for little bits like this, sleeves that are, have, you know, just different little feminine touches. But this is still a pretty casual shirt. This is the rusty colored one. It's a very casual fabric, which if you have seen my wearing only dresses and skirts for 30 days, I talked about getting more casual fabrics. I was a little concerned the pockets would make me feel more like I was like wearing an old, like kind of the old style nursing uh, skirts, but I just really wanted something casual. And I wear this high waisted with shirts tucked in. So this is the rusty colored one. And this is like, I don't know, it's not even blue. It's like grayish blue. Very nice, very pretty. And this is like, um, I think a camel, like a, just a sandy colored skirt. This is going to be tight on me after eating gumbo because it's so salty. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, so for the sake of this video, it's very wrinkly because it just came out. But I just wanted to share with you kind of the style. It's a new style. And I don't know, I like it, but it's just like, it's so different. So I think if anything, these skirts will be more like for around the house. They are super, sorry, they're super snug today. Oh my gosh, like after you eat salty food, it's the worst. But anyway, I love this, this top. I think it's super feminine, but casual at the same time. It does have that kind of like that um, cap sleeve, what's that called? I can't remember. It does lay on your shoulder pretty nicely. So yeah, I mean, it's cute. And I like it. It's just, oh, it's tight on me today. Hey everybody. Okay, so it's day 12 and we actually went to a beautiful retreat center. We visited it. It's called San Pedro's De Spiritual Development Center. It's near Orlando and it was a bit of a drive, but we got there. It was really nice and we stayed one night and then my husband had some work in the area for the church. And so he did that. And then we, visit we went to visit my mom and my sister and my nieces. It was a great visit. 
We're back home now, but I want to share with you guys some of the beautiful pictures of the center. If any of you happen to be in the Orlando area, it's a lovely place. And um, yeah, so let me show it to you really quick. this picture of the Blessed Mother. I can't remember the name, so I'll put it right here because I looked it up. Everyone was like, what is the name of this statue? It's so beautiful. Um, so it was a really great time. And I did have a couple of back spasms, which were really challenging. And I decided to not wear my veil at the mass. It was a very small mass. And I still struggle with feeling back and forth about like, I want to veil for our Lord. Um, and I also want to veil like, in first Corinthians and have like the order and stuff of, you know, male and female, but also it's always in the back of my mind of like how like no one else was veiling, which isn't a big deal, but it was a very small community. It was a small little mass. And, and I just wasn't sure if it was like the right time. I wasn't sure. So I ended up not wearing the veil. And, um, and then I kind of like went back and forth and prayed about it. And it's just an interesting thing being a, Catholic women in this day and age because I feel like things feel so divided and it can feel really confusing um, and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that, but I want to show that a little bit just for the people out there who are also feeling the same struggle. And I know I'll get comments and please keep the comments kind about this. It's fine to like give information. Um, just please do it with a polite attitude for my sake, others, and for your, your own sake. You know, you want to be charitable. <laughs> anyway, we all want to be charitable. But um, anyway, so it was a really beautiful time. I got rid of all of my Protestant books today, except for a few things I wanted to keep. They have some really great resources, especially for modesty. So I did keep those, but I got rid of um, all the other ones. I brought them to Goodwill. I'm like, someone is going to be really excited because all this stuff is new. So anyway, so I went and did that, and then we went and got a coffee maker, and um, I gave away some more things and just felt really good. And I feel so close to our Lord. I'm feeling so much closer to him. I feel like I can hear him speaking to me more now. And I've realized the desire to just be in your home, living out your vocation. I did start this one last, or this morning. I started like the preface or whatever it's called. It's gonna take me a while. I was gonna read it all through June, but it's going to take me a little while. But anyway, so day 12 and um, almost halfway through this beautiful challenge, challenge process journey. I finished the baby blanket for my friend and I was able to ship it out to her and it was such a blessing to be able to do this project and send it to her. Hi. Day 16, it's going well. I had some spiritual desolation this morning, but praise Jesus, the Lord revealed that that's what it was and I'm already out of it. Well, I'm, I'm getting out of it, but I got dressed, got my apron on, got my Christmas medal and my scapular um and that's just part of i feel like the little my coffee machine is really loud we got a coffee machine by the way too i gave up coffee um two years ago on and off but um i've slowly been introducing it back in um 
and it's been going really well. So yeah, I've been adding it back in. It's been really good. I have my morning smoothie. I've done the dishes today because we stayed up late watching a movie last night. Horrible language, but we like to watch movies with our kids and I can skip certain scenes and we can discuss it. So that was really nice. But um, yeah, so halfway through this challenge and feeling really thankful and so appreciative that I have it. Oh, and I have a little tip. So if any of you guys, if your husbands have uh, life insurance through Knights of Columbus, uh, they'll send a, a monthly, like a magazine in. And on the back, they have like little vocational stories. So I've been putting them up here recently. And um, uh, this is from last month. And this is this month. And I just feel like it's a really great Catholic tip for kids to just get to see stories of people with vocations in their everyday life. We also have this board and uh, this is another little fun thing to do. This is a fun thing to do in our cabinet. Um, you can put scripture verses, you can put little things that you learn. I had one of St. Um, Teresa of Lisieux the other day, a quote from her, and um, then I, I heard this on something and so I put this here but you can kind of change it up. And then we have like scripture verses around the house. Also, I did our uh, weekly meal plan. So here's our weekly meal plan, and this is a great thing, I feel like, for any household, but especially if you're really focusing on trying to save money. But I'll be honest, this week the meal plan did not save us money. I ended up going to the store way more, so next week I'll have to do a better job and make sure I have enough snacks. But this is a really great thing to have. I make a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. we call it coffee milk in Cajun country, and then cafe con leche, my husband's side. Good morning, it's Rian in here, it's day 22. It has been an interesting couple of days. I have, ha I have had a lot of spiritual warfare the last week, I would say, and um, I really have been enjoying the videos by this father, Friar, his channel, I can't remember what the name is right now, um, but it's been really, really helpful to me to stay on course with not allowing too much secular, secular stuff in. Um, and with just reminding myself that when you start a practice for the Lord, like you're really feeling him calling you to do something that like when you start to go through spiritual, like, like dryness and stuff like that to, to still stay the course. So, um, so yeah, so this week has been very valuable and this is like the heart of this because you can dress however you're going to dress. You can act, you know, externally a certain way you can cook and clean and do all the stuff that you want. But if your heart is not, I'll speak for myself. If my heart is not deeply rooted in our Lord and the church and what he's calling me to in my vocation, all the external stuff is just that. So um, it's been really interesting. I did go through some anxiety because I got some stuff back from a nurse practitioner with food sensitivities. And so I completely switched up the way I was eating and it actually has helped a lot mentally. And I think it's helping with my back and stuff like that. Um, and I, my Titus II women, if you don't know what Titus II is, go look it up because it talks about older women helping younger women in the church. Um, my Titus II woman, I remember years ago told me that, um, you know, we are body persons. So when we get closer to the Lord in our spiritual walk, then our body can actually be blessed by that and vice versa. When we physically go through something and we help our body physically, it can actually help our, our, our prayer life and our spiritual life. And she said it way better than me, but, and I have found that that's been the case this last week. I was going through some spiritual warfare. I was going through some hard times. I went through this process, of, you know, my food sensitivity, I switched over my eating and um, and I have been finding some physical, mental rather clarity and I feel like it actually was also being a blessing in the area of spiritual attack. So that's been really great. I wanted to add that in here just to share that portion of this journey as well. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go make my coffee and like I said, day 22, I think I said, I have eight more days of this beautiful 30 day process of really embracing traditional Catholic womanhood and it's been it has been truly a blessing. Hey guys it's day 26 and whirlwind. This has been a huge whirlwind. I have had to fight myself to keep doing this. I have gone through so many emotions but I have had some really big breakthroughs during this time during this process. 
um, I decided to get off of social media. I deleted Facebook and Instagram from my phone. I still have the accounts, but I got off of them. Um, I have realized a lot about myself and why I do the things I do, how I tick, and what the Lord is, how the Lord is guiding me through this process. And I have four days left of this 30 days of traditional Catholic womanhood, and I am really thankful I've done it. I have stepped away from a lot of the videos that I've been watching from very, very traditional Catholic uh, content, I guess. Um, I actually recognized that it was really bringing out my scrupulosity and I needed to move away from that. <laughs> and I really struggled with that for a while. I feel really good about it and I'm focusing more on listening to the word of God, you know, mass, my vocation, things like that. My hair's crazy. I got this new dress from Shein. It's so cute. I really like it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to run to the store with my kids when my kids is having um, wisdom teeth taken out today. So, and I had an, and another kid had to have a tooth pulled yesterday. It's just been, it's been a challenge. Um, so we're going to go get some stuff for this one to have to eat for the next couple of, like, of days and stuff. So. so yeah, so today um, has been okay. My son finished up with his uh, wisdom teeth surgery and had some anxiety. I found out an x-ray back about my back and I went to my chiropractor about that but um, I'm just really coming to a place where I'm recognizing that through this process being a traditional Catholic woman like recognizing all of these things as a devout like trying to be like a devout Catholic woman and if anything it's almost like that's what this challenge or process has transformed into instead of a traditional Catholic woman into a place of a devout Catholic woman. Hey everybody, so yesterday was the last day of this challenge and I wanted to give you guys some of my thoughts about this challenge and what kind of came out of it and all that good stuff. Close to the end of the challenge, I got really stressed because we had a lot of issues with some of our kids' teeth and like that week was really stressful and the weekend was stressful and I found myself turning towards social media to like release my stress. Um, and so I ended up totally cutting out Facebook and Instagram and only went down to YouTube. And then I ended up watching like a lot of just like, you know, everyday videos on weight loss and um, baking and people just talking about whatever on YouTube shorts. And did not listen to a lot of my prayers for a couple of days and I felt a huge difference. Um, and so that was really interesting to me. I didn't, I feel like I didn't like finish this challenge really strong because I, you know, was feeling like stress and just kind of turning to things that I was trying to pull away from. But then in the end was able to recognize it and kind of cut uh, the social media outlets off. I actually had my oldest daughter teach me how to put um, settings on my phone to have only a certain amount of time for YouTube app, which was really helpful because then I realized I wanted that time to be primarily for prayers and that kind of kept me from just like, sc like scrolling or whatever. Um, so I wanted to share that part of it because that was kind of the ending and I recognized in stressed, I tend to start going, okay, how can I just almost like escape by just watching something or spend my time. And so I'm um, being able to kind of nip that in the bud and turn to prayer instead. Um, but I really appreciated this challenge. I thought it was really powerful. Um, I also really recognized my scrupulosity and how it was like way heightened by watching a lot of like traditional Catholic content on YouTube. Um, and some books I was reading, just feeling like I was getting like almost like really overwhelmed and stressed instead of like finding peace in what I was watching. And so that also helped me to recognize that, you know, not every Catholic talk on YouTube is meant for me <laughs> or is even meant for um, a stay at home wife and mama. So years ago, my Titus Two woman talked about kind of the mom bubble and how she really kept herself in it and kind of kept away from like all the stuff that was going on in the news and all the stuff that was going on in the world because she really wanted to be completely available and devoted to her family and that also meant in her like her mental space and and I really recognize that way more during this time and how precious it is I already knew my children were precious but this time this challenge has like heightened that for me and helped me realize how precious 
you know, my family is and how fast everything goes and how, you know, um, their walk with Christ is so, so important. So that was really beautiful. So, and then also what came out of it was I found myself really struggling with, you know, like skirts or pants or, um, you know, sometimes I would wear like my workout clothes all day because I knew I was going to work out instead of like putting a dress on in the morning or even just putting on like nice put together clothes. And I did find that it really did help to kind of have like a quote unquote uniform on, um, having like a nice, you know, even if it's a casual like dress or skirt and a top, um, really helped me to focus in on like my daily responsibilities and just feeling more like lovely and joyful. It really made a difference for me. Maybe not everybody's like that, but it definitely affected me. And yeah, so the challenge was lovely, beautiful powerful, wonderful. I also went to confession. Um, I believe it's at the very beginning. And I, I talked to my priest about, you know, feeling like I'll be like really close to the Lord and like honoring him in everything I do. And then I'll start slipping and not necessarily like sinning, but just kind of like allowing, you know, like things in through social media or like the way people talk or things like that. And then I feel like I just so quickly almost like move away from God. And he was so wonderful. He said um, that, you know, these times can be a good thing because they remind us of how we are so dependent on God and how sometimes we can think it's really up to us and what we can do. But, you know, God, we are so dependent on God and our hope lies in him and, you know, trusting him. And so this challenge really brought that to light for me and helped me to remember how he is so great and how I can fall short so easily. And yeah, so I'm really glad I did this. I hope that it blessed somebody out there. I know this is probably like an hour long. So hopefully anybody who actually is interested in this content on this video will have stuck with it all the way through and could appreciate what I did here because even if it's just one person, because I know it really did something for me. I'm thankful for that. But anyway, so if you're new here, I'd love for you to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And let me know if this is something that you would be interested in seeing more of just content on like the Catholic faith and, you know, the beauty of, you know, marriage and family life and all that stuff. So which is pretty much all what this channel is about. But I will go and end this now. And I am so thankful that God put this challenge on my heart and that I got to share it with you all here. So I'll talk with you later. God bless. Oh,